I'm going to show you how to edit a vector graphic that you customize in Graphics Flow in the freeware program Inkscape. I've already gone in and recolored the design, I've changed the text, and at this point I'm going to download a PDF file. So here's the graphic right here. I'm going to go to the little ellipse icon. I'm going to say download PDF. I'm going to select a location on my hard drive, name the file, and click on save to create the PDF file. Once I've downloaded the PDF file, I can edit the vector art in the PDF using the Inkscape software. Inkscape is an open source freeware program. It's available for both Mac and Windows, and it can do substantially the same things that you can do with CorelDRAW or Adobe Illustrator. One of the things I really like about Inkscape, it's a very easy program to learn if you have no prior experience working with graphics. In order to get Inkscape, simply go to inkscape.org and download the version for either Mac or Windows operating systems. I've opened Inkscape and I'm going to open up the PDF file. So I'm going to go to File, I'm going to go to Open, I'm going to navigate to the PDF file, I'm going to highlight it, I'm going to click on Open, and then I'm going to click on OK to open the original PDF file. So here's the PDF file. This is an exact duplicate of the file that was created in Graphics Flow. So you'll notice if I select on the PDF file right here, there's a weathered overlay. One of the things I'm going to do to kind of ease the editing process is I'm going to select that overlay with the selection tool. I'm going to go over here to Layers and Objects. If you don't have that selected, just go to Object and select Layers and Objects. And then you can see that we have different objects in the design. I'm going to select that weathered overlay right here. I'm going to highlight it. I'm going to click the eye icon to turn it off. And we can go turn this on anytime we choose to. So the next thing I'm going to do is I want to take a look at the design in wireframe view. I want to see what's going on underneath the hood in the artwork. So I'm going to go to view. I'm going to go to display mode and I'm going to click on outline view. So we're actually seeing the vectors in the artwork. One of the things I immediately notice is in this line of text, there's overlapping paths where we have the script text. And so if I'm going to add an outline to this, I want to go ahead and weld those paths together. So all I need to do is select that object, go over here to path, click on union, and it'll weld that together. And you notice when I select on these objects, I can resize them, reposition them. If I want to scale the object from the inside out in a proportional fashion, what I'm going to do is hold down my shift and my control keys right here. So I'm making it larger, but I'm keeping it proportional. I can click anywhere on the graphic and adjust it, get it exactly the way I want. We're going to go down here where the 2023 is. I'm going to hold down control and shift. I'm going to make that slightly larger and then I'm going to move it down. So each one of these objects in the design is a separate element that can be edited independently. I'm going to go back to normal view and we're going to change the colors in the design. So I'm going to go over here to view. I'm going to select display mode, normal. And then what I'm going to do is select one color in the design and use the selection feature to select all the instances of that color and change the colors. So I'm going to go over here to the edit function. I'm going to select select same and I'm going to say select fill color we're going to select all the instances of that gold. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here and select orange as my new color. And we can repeat that same process with the blue if we like. So I'm going to select on the blue object right here, edit, select same, fill color, and then we'll pick a brighter blue. Now you'll notice this blue did not select because it's a different version of that same blue. So it's a slightly different color. So I'm just going to select on that and then we'll click on that blue. So now we've got the image recolored and we can do any other kind of advanced editing. You have the ability, if you want to change object order, I'll just move that right here. We'll go down here and say raise to top. We can move it in front, behind. If you don't like the changes you made, you can hit control Z. One thing I might choose to do is add a stroke or an outline to an object. So I'm going to go over here and select central high. Remember we welded that copy together so it's all one unified path. I'm going to go down here to the orange that I'd selected. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to say set stroke to give it an outline. Now, what I can also do is I can go to my outline functions over here. And if I choose to, we'll go over here to the stroke style and we can increase that. Let's say make it a two point value. And we can also change the relative position of that outline. So I'm going to go down here to order and I'm going to select the option right here in the middle. And we're going to move that outline behind the object. 
Now an easy way to recolor an object from the colors that are already in the design is to select the object and then go over here and grab the dropper tool and click on the color you'd like to swap and it'll swap it out live in the graphic. So you can see that you have lots of options for modifying the design and really bringing it to life and making it your own. So Graphics Flow will give you that wonderful starting point, but if you want to do real advanced editing, you have the opportunity to bring it into Inkscape, reposition objects, add outlines to objects, recolor. You have a lot of editing level control in the Inkscape application. One important consideration is when I opened up the PDF file in Inkscape, all of the text is converted into outlines, or in some cases we call that converted into curves. So I don't have the ability to change the text values. So all of your text values should be changed directly in the Graphics Flow Stock Art Customizer. I still have the ability to apply the weathered overlay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select all, Control A on my keyboard. I'm going to group the design. The easiest way to do that is to right click and select group. And then I'm going to turn the overlay back on. So I'm going to go over here to my layers. I'm going to go to where the overlay is. I'm going to turn it right back on. The overlay is a bitmap that sits over the vector graphic. It has a transparent background and it has a fill color that's currently set to white. So the first thing I want to do is I want to change that fill color to black. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on black here to change that fill color. And then I'm going to select the entire graphic. I'm going to select it, and then I'm going to go over here to Object, Mask, Set Inverse Mask. And so now that bitmap overlay is punching through the graphics. So if we move it onto a dark substrate, you're not seeing that box. And that's very important. If you're going to create a virtual sample on a product, then the substrate color will show through. So you'll see the gray t-shirt showing through and the graphics sitting on top of that. After you're done editing, you can save the changes to the original PDF file. So I'm going to go to File, I'm going to select Save. I'm going to click on OK to save those changes. And this is the file that you'd send to an outside supplier in the case that you were going to get a transfer made or maybe have somebody scrape print wearables for you. The PDF file format can be opened in any popular graphics program and can be edited in CorelDRAW or Illustrator. And in the case of a Corel or Illustrator user, they can also color separate this file quite easily to create transfers or to do a screen print. If you're going to create a web graphic or possibly upload to a social media post, you can also create a PNG file with a transparent background. What you would do is you go to File, you'd click on Export, the little Export window is going to pop up. You're going to click down here and select your file type. I'm going to select PNG. You would name the file, and you'd click on Save to create the PNG file. In summary, you can do a tremendous amount of advanced editing to graphics flow files using the free Inkscape program. It doesn't have all of the sophisticated features of CorelDRAW or Adobe Illustrator, but it's quite easy to use and it can certainly get the job done.